You're probably familiar with podcasts and audiobooks, but you may not be familiar with how poorly they're monetized by the companies that distribute them. Apple Podcasts would be one of the pioneers in this space, but Spotify is the one that has really made a big business in podcasts and is trying to make it an even bigger business supported by advertising. But just how poorly do podcasts monetize compared to things like radio and TV? The numbers are really shocking. And that's ultimately the potential for Spotify as a company. And there's a comparison that I want to make. And that is a company that you probably know well, that is Facebook from a decade ago. You may not know this, but the revenue that Facebook generates per user on their family of apps is up 10x over the last 10 years. So I'm going to dig into all these numbers today tell you why I really like Spotify's potential and where we'll see that manifest. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. Check out fool.com slash A-S-Y-M for their top 10 stocks to buy right now. And I want to start by laying the groundwork with what Spotify is doing and how poorly the podcast business is monetized today. Now, Spotify doesn't break out all the numbers uh, and where they come from, where what's premium. What is ad supported? What, what goes to music versus podcast? But what we know is that the ad supported business is essentially the only revenue source for the podcast business. They've actually put their podcast costs in the ad supported business. So when they say, when they report gross margins for ad supported, that actually in, include podcast, podcast costs. So that's sort of the proxy that we can use. So you can see that revenue from premium subscriptions. So there are 226 million premium subscribers for Spotify, 2.9 billion euros in revenue in the most recent quarter. So that's a really big business. The advertising business, all of the advertising business that includes music and podcasts, just $447 million worth of revenue. That's up 16% year over year. That's a pretty nice growth rate, but I think the potential there is to be much, much higher. If we just look at these ad supported numbers, 447 million euros on an annualized basis. We annualize that and then divide it by the 361 million ad supported users. That's about $5 per user that Spotify is generating in revenue from a monthly active ad supporting ad supported user. Where, where does this stand compared to the industry? And this is from a study from Deloitte. This is a couple of years old at this point, but the directional trends are correct. And you can see that this is the Revenue by industry, podcasting, $1.1 billion in revenue. That's probably up a little bit since then. But like I showed earlier, we're talking about a teen growth rate. We're not, this is not, this is not really a business that has doubled year over year. So $1.1 billion, recorded music, $21 billion. And then other big ad supported businesses like TV, 400 billion, magazines, newspapers, radio, I think is a, I think is a really good proxy, $42 billion in revenue. So these are much, much bigger businesses. And, and on a per user basis, Spotify or any of these companies are not really generating a lot of revenue, but they're trying to build out the technology to monetize a little bit better than they're doing today. So there's an interesting comparison with Meta and where the company has come. And that's what I want to get to next. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. This chart is a look at Facebook or Meta's advertising revenue. This would be for all of the family of apps, but this does not include the VR revenue. This is advertising revenue compared to total monthly active users. Monthly active users now over 3 billion, and the company is generating $124.5 billion worth of revenue. That's about $40 in revenue per user on a global basis. There's a big, huge differences between how much is made on users in the US versus some international markets. But on a global basis, you're talking about $40 per year. A year ago, Facebook's revenue per user was about $4 per user. So in that span of time, not only has the user base about tripled, but the monetization, the ability to generate revenue on a per user basis has gone up 10x. And I think ultimately, this is the path forward for Spotify. This switch to a monetization model with advertising doesn't happen overnight. You need to build out, you need to build out the tools to track where these ads are going. Advertisers need to move to your platform. You have, they have to be able to do content creation. There's lots of things that happen on the back end. And then advertising 
isn't just a switch that turns on from a billion dollars to $10 billion either. Budgets are made on a yearly or even multi-year basis. So if you're going to advertise on something like Meta, let's say you're doing that in 2012, you might spend $1,000 in advertising, and then you'd see what the returns are on those ads. And then the next year, you would maybe double or triple the amount of advertising you're going to do. And that keeps growing year after year after year. Big companies do this. Small companies do this. Companies see what they can build on these new platforms. It's really where Facebook benefited from a lot of the small shops being built on Shopify. So we're at the very early days of that ecosystem with Spotify. The company's advertising business is still relatively young and immature, but we're seeing new tools being rolled out all the time. We have artificial intelligence tools that the company is building to have celebrities to be able to be able to read an ad for a local company. That local targeting is getting better and better. I know that I have seen that even just in my Spotify usage that ads, instead of just being brand advertising that might be applicable to almost anybody in the country, now we're starting to get ads that are based on where I am physically. So the upside from doing this and building out that ecosystem and building that trust with advertisers is something that happens for years. There's a reason that Radio still commands the kind of revenue it does. Advertisers are used to it. They know what to expect. They know how much something is going to cost. They know what the impact is going to be. They don't know the same things with Spotify. So you don't just roll into Spotify and say, hey, I'm going to start advertising and I'm going to give you all of the money that I used to spend on radio and I'm going to just move it over to Spotify. That doesn't make any sense for any company and that's not the way that business works. But you start to get this ball rolling. You start to improve the back end technology. You start to gain trust with advertisers, and you have the increased inventory or the number of places that you can put those ads with the growing number of podcasts and the number of hours listened. I think that's ultimately the growth trajectory for Spotify. This is about a four or $500 million business on a quarterly basis. Today, 10 years from now, could we see Spotify doing four to $5 billion worth of advertising on a quarterly basis? I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities. And the example for how this happens is, is Facebook and that company's success. I don't think they have the same potential for monetizing as Facebook does. There's just so much attention that goes into social media, but there's a ton of attention going into podcasting and advertising that can be put behind podcasts or music. And I think this is going to be a massive market for Spotify. So if you haven't looked at Spotify lately, this may be something to com consider when you're looking at the stock. The company seems to have really turned a corner in 2023. Not only are the monthly active users growing, monetization is getting a little better. They're pushing through a price increase and operating costs are starting to come down. Management really seems to be focused on getting those operating costs under control. I think we're going to see those margins expand across the board, not only to end this year, so the fourth quarter, but into 2024, as a lot of the layoffs that were announced recently take a couple of quarters to really go through the system. So their margins are going to be improving. And if we see the revenue increase at the same time, like it did at Facebook, this could be a phenomenal stock to own for the next decade. So what do you think of Spotify and the future of advertising? Any similarities you see with Facebook? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.